everyone, I'm Allie Buckman with the Potomac Bead Company and due to popular demand, I'm going to do a video today on a mala necklace or a mala chain rope which uses a guru bead and a tassel generally. The mala is a Buddhist uh, prayer chain or prayer beads used a lot in religion are beads to count while you're meditating or doing prayers and different reciting of different mantras. So that's what the uh, actual mala bead is going to be the actual whole strand and then our guru bead which we're using here at the end is the actual bead at the end of the mala so sometimes they kind of get mixed up word wise what you're using for this generally you're going to be using a tassel and some cording some round beads most of the times they're round and they're smooth rather than faceted because it's something that you don't really want to think about you're just using it for a counting mechanism a lot of the times the same thing for a rosary or for other um, prayer beads as well this is an eight millimeter round strand that I'm using in addition to the guru, the tassel, and the silk. If you need any of these materials, we'll drop down a little menu here on the left hand side, which will give you links to all of these different products. When you're looking at bead selection, um, we have a bunch of different mala beads. So the mala beads are sold individually, and they're kind of an unusual bead that goes at the end, or the guru bead, I'm sorry, goes at the end of the mala. When you look at the guru bead, it actually has three holes. The ones we're carrying here are 10 millimeter, and they have a hole going through each side, and then a larger hole coming out the bottom. So it's a T shape basically that the hole goes in from one side to the other and then through a T down the middle. When it comes out the middle then through that larger hole on this lapis one you can see, you then put a bead here, it's a little cone shaped bead and that goes on the bottom as well. So they're sold as a set and we have a number of different materials, the lapis, the amethyst, smoky quartz, we have some carnelian, some white halite, some turquoise halite, uh, tiger's eye. So I'm going to be actually using the tiger's eye with mine. And again, they're 10 millimeter for the guru beads. And for the mala strand, I've selected in order to match that tiger's eye guru bead to use the Picasso Jasper 8 millimeter round strand. It has nice kind of earthy tones that'll look great with the design that I'm going for. If you do need this item, it's product number 29959 and that's an eight millimeter round strand. There are 50, approximately 50 beads on a 16 inch strand, which is going to get to be a little bit longer because I'm going to be knotting in between. So if you do want more than one strand, you want it to be a little bit longer, you can also get two strands of the beads. I also have a tassel that I'll be using at the end of the mala, and this tassel is just a um, a two-inch tassel here, and it's a variety of colors, uh, and it's called Enchanted Forest is what the tassel is called. So I'm going to be using that at the very base of the mala, and then to tie it all together and to knot in between the beads. I'm using size 8 silk beading cord. Um, it's a griffin silk. It comes on one long piece, and I'm going to be using that. I'm working on a bead mat here, and I have some super new glue, a cutters or a scissors you want to have handy, and then also I have a pliers just to, or a tweezers, it's a bent tweezers, just to show you knotting wise, just a little trick. If you have a beading awl that works too, or a round nose pliers, once you get the hang of knotting in between the beads, you don't need to go in and actually use a tool to do it, you can just do it with your hands. So to get started, I'm going to get ready by preparing my silk in order to use. So to prepare my silk, I'm going to show you here kind of taking it out of the package. And this is just the green color of silk. I thought it would be fun to use a different color. And it matches a lot with um, the tassel. So this is a um, silk cording made in Germany. It's Griffin beading silk. And it comes with a needle already attached. It's a wire needle which is going to make it really nice, especially when we get down here to the bottom to the guru bead. But you want to take the entire thing off the cording. So I'm taking the entire, entire thing because the needle is at the very beginning of the cording and I want to get to the very end of the cord. So once you take the whole thing off, and I'll just do it off the screen here very quickly. Once you get the whole thing off the cording or off the card, you're left with the end of the silk. 
silk naturally is going to have a little bit of stretch to it, the silk corning. So what I like to do before I do any knotting projects, especially if I want the knots to be nice and close, is I pre-stretch my silk. You can see I'm just kind of pulling in different directions. Some people will even wet the silk and let it dry. If you want to, some of the other videos, I folded my card for my silk and kind of pulled it through and created some tension there. Just be careful as you stretch because you will get rope burns if you pull it through your fingers. But I'm just using a lot of tension, and kind of stretching this out. If you want to, I've seen other people kind of tie weights to the bottom of it to stretch it out. The thicker the silk cord, the less you'll actually notice the different stretching. The thinner, actually, I think you can notice when it stretches a little bit more. Once you have that entire thing pulled out and kind of stretched out, and I usually will do that about two times in my hands, I'm going to go ahead to the very, very bottom of the silk and leaving myself about three inches of silk, I'm going to simply tie an overhand knot. That knot I pull tight and I'm just going to let that there. Going then to my strand of beads, I'm going to cut that strand and we're going to be starting at the back of the mala. So again, there's 50 beads on one strand, so I know when I use 25 of them that I'm at the middle of the necklace and then it's going to be time to add my guru bead and my tassel. When practicing knotting, if you want that knotted look, it's a good idea to practice with a bunch of your cording and realize that your knots to begin with are not, not going to be perfect. A lot of knots in there. To practice, and the same thing with starting out, you're just going to put on one of your beads and let it drop down to the knot that you created. Once it's there, if you're used to sewing or used to doing an overhand knot, you can tie a knot, pull the cord through, pushing that knot down close to the bead, I'm pulling tension and pulling the cording down towards me and pulling that knot in nice and close. And that does my knot. Another technique that you can do is as I pull the whole cording here, there's a lot going on there. Another technique that you can do is using a beading awl, or in this case here, I just have the bent nose pliers. If I had an awl uh, handy, I would grab that instead. I just don't have one here with me. You can also use a thick piece of wire if you need that as well. So once I get my next bead on, I'm going to have that drop down next to the previous knot. Taking my strand here, I'm going and creating the knot, pulling all that cording through and then I get a loop. Before I tighten that loop, you can put in your tweezers, pull that loop closer to the bead, kind of pushing your tweezers down, and just release the tweezers as you get closer to the bead. And that's going to get your next knot. If you want the knots to be super tight next to one another, I would recommend practicing and using an awl. I get very uh, board using the awl. So I tend to just use my fingers. I can show you again quickly. Knotting is one of those things that you can show, but you really just have to do it. So I'm going to go in, create my knot, and if you sew, you have a definite advantage because you're used to holding the thread. Get close to the bead and just push that knot in place and let go. Continuing on now, I'm going to continue knotting my beads in place till I have on 25 of those beads because I want to do half my strand. So I've gone halfway now putting on my beads and you can see my knots in between. A good idea when you're done with each knot or when you're done with a series of knots is to actually hold it and kind of stretch it and make sure that those knots are pulled nice and tightly when you're working with it. So you can see here I just did quick knots. They're not um, super close together, but they're close enough. I like the beads to be able to move just a little be bit. I don't like when they uh, do pearl knotting or anything so tight that sometimes it 
makes the beads sit funny. If you don't want to do the knotting, but you still want the look, a good idea is to just get an 11 OC bead that looks nice in between, and you can use that in between to give the look of the knotting, and that's a little cheat, without actually having to do the knotting yourself. So I have here my uh, half of my strand, which was about eight inches, made about 10 inches of, of my actual mala by the time you knot in between. I'm at the base now of my little prayer bead, and what I'm going to be doing is adding my guru bead and my tassel. Again, when you look at the guru bead, there's three holes. There's one going from one side to the other side, and then they actually come up right through the middle, and there's a bigger hole here at the middle. Getting my tassel ready, which this is a pre-made tassel, but you can also make your own. Some people will also put a metal piece below or above. I'm just using the simple materials here. You're going to take your needle and actually go into the guru bead and kind of create a little bend in your wire. That's going to help you because the trickiest part of this is actually going through, and sometimes you need to go in with your beading needle and actually take it through and bring it out the middle. You can see the wire will go naturally in from one side to the other side to show that hole. And then this one here, if you put it in, it stops halfway because it's actually only connecting to the holes that you have here on the side. So if you put your beads here, in the center. This cording is actually pretty flexible and the easiest thing is to pull the cording through, go back with a beading needle, grab one here, and you're going to go in and actually kind of push to the side and try to pull that thread through the center of the guru bead. So I'm going to do a little playing with this, pulling that thread right through the center with my needle. Or if you have a tweezers with a fine enough tip, you can go in with the tweezers and actually pull that out as well. As I was sitting here and struggling with the tiger's eye, I actually had some other ones sitting close by. And looking at it twice, I like the carnelian look better. So I'm actually switching to the carnelian. Um, and just to show you, when you put the needle through and you have the hole there, it's hard to see, but you may be able to see the actual wire through the middle of the bead there, and I'm going to pull the cording through. I then went in with my needle, grabbed onto that thread, and pulled that through, creating a little bit of a bump. I can then pull my needle back out through the bead and get that thread in there. With the loop then that I've created, I'm going to go through my tassel and through my guru bead. So coming out through that guru, I stopped the video because pulling the needle through makes this awful noise. But I, so I have my bead there through my one hole of my guru bead and it's coming out that larger hole in the center. It's then going to go through the cap portion of the bead through the bigger hole first go through the tassel, and then the thread's going to go back up through that middle bead here, pull that up. Here's where I said some people will put on like a bead cap or a different bead. So that's going to hang right there at the bottom. Now I have the fun of getting this. You can see you can kind of straighten out your needle if it gets bent up or grab your pliers. And I'm going to go back through the guru and turn my needle and kind of push it through so that way it gets through and comes out the other side of that guru bead. So just showing you before I pull the needle through the guru bead, I actually went in and bent my needle a little bit in order to get that wire needle through. And then taking my pliers, oops, I can pull that wire through a little bit and pull it out that guru bead. Just makes a horrible kind of scraping sound. So when I get that through, and then 
I can pull it. And you can kind of wiggle it back and forth as you straighten out your cording. And don't pull too tight. You can see it is a little bit taxing to do. But just do a little bit at a time, pulling through and getting that thread then the whole way through that guru. And you're just making the turn little by little and that's why it's pulling through there. Just making that turn little by little. Pull a little bit more. You can hear that kind of clicking, scraping sound. A little bit more. And keep going. And once the needle gets through, then the thread will go through, no problem. I'm going to continue pulling that through without you guys having to listen to that awful scraping sound. Straighten out my needle as I go. And pull the rest of that thread up through the guru. Now that I've got that through and my threads through, I'm just going to push that guru bead up towards the last bead. Pull the thread down here to make sure that there's no extra thread exposed. So you can see now the look of having that first little bead right there next to the guru bead. So I'm simply going to knot when I'm out the side of the guru. Knot my cording here next to the bead. Give a little pull and I'm going to continue on adding the rest of my Picasso Jasper, that rest of the eight millimeter strand. So it looks great here in the middle with that guru bead going one way, the other way. Because of that triangle hole, even though it's a little bit of a pain to pull through, uh, it really does give it a nice look because it sits really, really nice on it. You hardly see the thread at the bottom here attaching to the tassel. And just taking the rest of my beads off my thread, I'm gonna go in, knot these, and I'll show you then how we close off and knot the back together. So I'm at the last bead here and I kind of got ahead of myself. I have the tail sticking out from the original side and I have my last bead that I put on. What I'm going to do is actually put the needle and thread skipping over the knot through the first bead that I put on the strand. That pulls that bead in right next to my original bead. So I have one thread coming out on one side, one cut thread coming out on the other side of the original bead. With the original tail, what I'm gonna do is tie a knot around that new piece of thread that's coming in, that new piece of silk cording. Pull nice and tight, and that's gonna get that side nice and knotted. On the other side, same thing. I'm going to knot. If you want to, you can even leave a space between the two beads before you do the first knot. And I'm just knotting my second side of my thread here around on the other side of that knot. So you'll see it presents a little bit bigger of a knot, but by the time you use, um, by the time you do the actual piece and pull it, you're not going to see it much. And then going to go into the project and glue it, gluing that, those two knots that I just created just a tiny little bit with that super new glue. If you do want it to go around your head, um, I actually have a tiny head so I can probably fit this around, but this right here is about 18, um, 19 inches by the time that you get it done. Once it dries a little bit, you can take wire cutters or scissors and cut down really closely. If you have a thread burner, um, sometimes it can mess up your tip, but if you want to, you can actually burn it a little bit. Cut off your ends. And there you have your mala completely done. If you want to, again, you can kind of stretch that from one side and the other. These beads have a pretty big hole, so they might go over the knot. I could have even used a size 10 with it if I wanted to do that, um, the size 10 thread. But there I have my mala done with that guru bead, which is a little bit of a pain to get on, but looks really cool there in the center. And my beads the whole way around the back, seamless without an end.
If you do need any of these materials, you want the Guru, you want any of the Jasper beads, the silk, uh, we can definitely help you out with that. You can go back to the beginning of the video or you can go underneath the video here. There's always a little description and then it shows show more details. If you click on that, it'll be links to all the different products that we used. We have tons and tons of gemstones so you'll really get your selection. Also, if you visit PotomacBeads.com, you can check out our locations page and the stores are going to have a great selection of gemstones for you to pick from. So if you get a chance to stop in there and ask them for some help. There's also a bunch of other videos too on kind of creating a tassel and using a tassel as well. So you may want to check those out. If you want to, you can subscribe to our YouTube channel and then you'll be able to get regular updates when we do different videos, whether or not it's the one here on the mala or doing, I have this one handy, doing some wire working gemstones or as well doing uh, some bead weaving too and some product updates. As always, thanks a lot for watching everyone. Check out all the different videos, check out the supplies online and at potomacbeads.com. You can also join our Facebook group, um, which is beading and jewelry making. Join there, socialize with other people that make awesome products, ask questions, give opinions, and give ideas. Thanks so much for watching everybody. Have fun if you get a chance to create a mala prayer bead necklace or chain. Thank you.